that we are at the anniversary of the uh, Tulsa massacre, not not race riots, because people keep saying race riots. The the Tul Tulsa that means two people participated. <laughs> the the Tulsa massacre, and what's really interesting is that. I know there are a lot of projects out there, but there are three major projects that are out there right now. There's the own spotlight, a project which is called the Legacy of Wall Street. That comes out uh, June the 1st. There's the uh, CNN LeBron and Maverick uh, Carter piece, which is called Dreamland. And that's the burning of Black Wall Street. And that comes out on uh, Monday, May the 31st at, at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Then there's the History Channel Russell Westbrook piece, which is Tulsa Burning, and it comes out uh, this Sunday, I think Eastern Standard Time uh, at uh, 8, 8 uh, uh, p.m. And I was saying to myself, why is everybody doing a piece on this? But then I had to step back and said, I'm glad somebody is doing a piece on this. So if, if you don't see something about this, it's your fault. Because er, I, I think Gail King is doing a piece on it uh, in a couple of days as well. So everybody's doing something. And I'm watching all three of these pieces because I think that by watching all three of these pieces, I'm learning a little bit of something different uh, at each time. Uh, I'm actually thankful that they're doing it. And as opposed to critical that we have so many pieces out there. Your thoughts? Listen, in a time when people are fighting for teachers to teach the true history to what happens to different communities of color, this is pertinent. This is something that should have been taught in the schools. We have people who were born and raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that didn't know that this happened in their backyard. Like a gentleman, um, 60 Minutes did a piece on it, and he said he went to college. And the professor was talking about the Tulsa mass uh, massacre and he raised his hand. He goes, this doesn't happen. I'm from Tulsa. I never heard of this. And the professor was like, it did and proceeded to you know, make the case and show. That is why you need to teach history, the truth. You know what I mean? And um, I said this too, my husband and I were having this conversation. I go, this is really a daggone shame that so much of us that had the luxury of going to college, didn't learn a good chunk of our history, the history of our contributions to this world and the history of contributions to this country until we went to college. Now imagine all the people that didn't get a chance to go to college and learn this stuff, right? There, there's a lot of people still walking around in the dark. And this is why these shows are important because otherwise they may never get these nuggets unless you have educators in your family. It is really astounding to me that it has taken, right? You and I are a little bit older. We're still fine though. We're still cool. <laughs> a little bit older that it's taken until we are the age that we are now to get these specials. Yeah. Yeah. You know? no, and that's it's... the thing you have to ask yourself. Like, and it, I, I'm, I agree with Ava DuVernay's session, like first black, first Asian, we should be ashamed of yourself. We're in 2021. This ain't 1920 that we still are having first. And a lot of that is again, because people don't want to tell the truth. And I, rec I commend LeBron and Russell who are using their uh, platform, who are using their money to help further the conversations. We have a lot of people in this country, unfortunately, some of them that look like us, people like Jason Whitlock, who like to use Jesus and church. And one day we'll talk about why some of this rhetoric is very uh, kind of productive to us as black people, but they like to use that and, and, and say that their conservative values are family values. And I'm like, isn't that what was used to enslave us, to other us, to second us, to justify us living on the other side of the train tracks? And to show you, for those of you that aren't familiar, how this massacre affected the community to this day. If you go to a lot of Southern towns or Midwest towns where there is a train track, the black people live on one side, the white people live on the other. The only time they interact is school and work. 
And this is what happened after this event, the black people were like, we are only interacting with you on a need basis with the white people. And this is where a lot of fear comes through. I always say black people are not pre are prejudiced because of what they experience. Not all white people, but white people are racist because they deem themselves to be superior. And therein lies the difference. This event has, is so rooted in that community that to this day, the descendants and a lot of people that know about this are like, I don't really want to interact with you because I don't want this to happen again. And it also do yourself a favor, and I don't mean to be ranting or going on, is Google on social media the testimony of the survivors of the massacre. There's a beautiful woman, I forgot what her name is, she's 107 years old, and her brother, who's 100 years old, testified in front of Congress and they explained what they experienced. They were kids that day and they are asking for justice. That community is asking for justice yeah. and why we have people that are supposed to represent us telling us that that doesn't matter and that we need to get over things. Yeah, I, so I'm, I'm really glad that, that, that uh, the, uh, of all the stuff that you just got through saying, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that you also uh, shine some spotlight on the fact that you get people like a LeBron and Maverick Carter, uh, a Russell Westbrook using their their capital, and I don't mean money, uh, so just just money, but using their their uh, social, political, and and monetary capital to shine a light on this story. I, I'm in the process of watching all of them, and um, and and their Again, just just very, very interesting. So I'm glad you weighed in on that.